Well, a huge hello to you who are joining us. This is the first Sisterhood Lounge Room of the year. So exciting. Ooh. Thank you for being with us. Here we are in 2022. It still sounds a little weird to me. 2022 is a bit of a mouthful. But thank you for being with us. It is going to be a fun day together. And I'm really excited because, the, you know, sisterhood is one of my favorite things ever. But the new year, it's like this blank slate. There's so many opportunities and possibilities of things that to come all the good things that are probably in store for us. Maybe some curveballs, <laughs> like we have encountered over the last two years. Um, so we never know, but I love that as God girls, we know that no matter what we face, whether mm. the mountaintops or the valleys, we don't do it alone. We have a God who's actually gone before us, Alpha and Omega, he knows the whole story and it's going to be incredible. And so my heart for us girls as sisterhood this year is that we will look back on this 2022 and we will see, maybe we're not exactly where we wanna be because we're all a process on this journey of called life, but we're gonna look back and see we actually have come so far, that God has been so faithful and that we grow in our relationship with God together. I love these conversations that we've been having. And I feel like it draws so much depth and gold and wisdom and helps us get better together, mm. that we ultimately grow closer with Jesus, that we grow closer with one another. Friendship is such a beauty of life, I think. And we get to do it together as a sisterhood girls. And so I'm very excited for the year. But as you can see, we have, I think we're starting the best of the best, really. You girls <laughs> are seriously <laughs> amazing. No, you really are. And so many of you might not know everyone sitting on these couches with me. So we're going to have a little bit of an introduction. First, Anna. Hi. Beautiful Anna. Married to your bestie, you said. Yes. 22 years, two teenage kids. How's Indeed. it going? Yeah, it's going great. Yeah. yeah. One 19-year-old boy and one 14-year-old yeah. girl. Anna How puppy, a dog. Anna puppy. Yeah. yeah. Indy Love Rose. She's awesome. Very Aww. cute. She's the baby of the house. Really? Gets <laughs> away with everything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. So you are incredible girl boss uh -huh. and you really are. Psychologist, also executive coach. Can you explain? Because it really is amazing. What do you actually do for work? What do I actually do? <laughs> so I actually run, I'm the general manager of a leadership development and coaching consultancy. I run the UK subsidiary of that global leadership development consultancy. Um, and it does involve a lot of um, my background and training in psychology, the work yeah. that we do. Um, so essentially I use psychology in the context of the workplace, um, coaching senior leaders from some of the largest organizations in the world. I love what I do. Amazing. Um, yeah. Literally girl boss over here, hey. <laughs> love it. And um, I love that I found out this about you. So born in Lisbon in Portugal, yes, but your indeed. great, great, great grandfather <laughs> was the first yes. president of Portugal. True. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's so cool. That is, is a very cool fact. I mean, I should add he was only there for a year. But... <laughs> the first he was is the there. first. It's he a... was literally, I think, the second president, one of the first ones, either the first one or the second one. Yeah. Wow, amazing. And here yeah. we have Rosalie, beautiful. And I have known you since bef the the days of old when I used to be here way yeah. back when and just so faithful, amazing woman of the house, been around <laughs> in our church for over 20 years and been so involved in so many different things and also social justice and things. You're married to Dom, two children, live yeah. so close to me. We bump into each yeah. other in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really running like, I'm late again. It's <laughs> awesome, glorious chaos. But you are also a girl boss. Explain yeah. what you do for work. Yeah, so... Um, well, I also am a coach as well, and I uh, work with business owners, mm -hmm. um, small to medium-sized business owners, to help them create a marketing strategy, put themselves out there, um, expand their mindset so that they can create wealth for their family mm -hmm. and their generations to come. I love so that. Mm -hmm. um, it's been such a fun journey. I have the <laughs> privilege to work with the most amazing women um, and men as well, yeah. but mostly women, um, yeah, to help them build a, an amazing business. So so, I love that. And so you speak cool. five languages. I do. Five. Which are the five? Yeah. So I, well, I should say I speak four and a half languages, yeah. really. Um, so I speak um, Spanish is my first language, uh, French, um, Haitian Creole, 
uh, English is my fourth language, and then Portuguese, which is more like Portugnol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that is actually incredible. That yeah. English is your fourth language and this is how you, like, <laughs> yeah. it blows my mind. Amazing. And then yeah. Mari from our amazing Liverpool campus. Thank you. Coming all the way down today. <laughs> I know you're saying it's just so good to get out of the house and do something. I love but... a road trip, guys. Have a good time. <laughs> so good. You also got married at 19 like I did. I did. So teenage bride. Teenage bride. Two Gotta children. Love it. Two babies, medium size now, medium which size. I think is fair to say, because yeah. they're 14 and 11. I nearly said 12, but he's, you know, it's a few months to go. Yeah, um, yeah good little kitties, actually. Couldn't love that. Love my little fam. You had the most incredible upbringing. Ah, uh, okay, okay. You, so you, you literally were on road trips and your mum was a singer. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I basically like never went to school as a primary school kid. So I'm extremely dyslexic, cannot spell for toffee, probably can't <laughs> even spell toffee to be fair. Because um, I just miss school all the time wow. because I was on tour with my mum. So she was in an ABBA tribute band wow. um, before Mamma Mia came out. So like this is, this is like days <laughs> OG, before. Yeah, original. this is the OG guys. <laughs> Um, and she was Frida, my stepdad was Bjorn, and they toured the world. So I did the UK and Europe tours with them and tour bust it Monday wow. to Friday. I also worked as well on the side as an actress. So I had the so fun. craziest, How craziest fun. childhood. So you spent good. more time on film sets, you said, than actually in primary school. I spent more time on film sets in front of cameras or like backstage or side of stage. And whenever we um, go to church, whenever yeah. we come visit London, I'm like, I've been back there so <laughs> many times. And every theatre in the UK, I know the crevices and wow. I know the green oh, rooms because so I I remember them all. Amazing. And yeah. you work for Alpha I do. International here I in do. the UK. I do. I do. Do you do. love that? I love that. I really do. It kind of mixes all my passions of church, which, yeah. you know, is a huge thing for me, but also development of church because my job is to really go in. I want to say coach, but I'm sat with like two professional coaches. So I go in and Absolutely. chat with <laughs> church leaders um, and we talk around like implementing evangelism strategy and growth strategy and really talk about right now invitational culture. Yeah. That seems to be really big and volunteerism mm. seems to be huge this year particularly. So yeah. it's kind of going in basically a professional coffee drinker and just <laughs> sitting with leaders. That sounds like the dream really right fun. there. Love yes. it. And so, so, so I've good. been doing it for years. So, so good. Well, what do you talk about the first month of the year? I think um, there's so many different topics that we could be talking about, but you are all incredible women and I'm excited to draw some wisdom. But we're going to talk about priorities, plans and dreams. Because I think, you know, setting out the year with intention is so important. We do, we have this blank canvas and it's a time to recenter and realign and think, okay, what do I actually want to accomplish this year? And maybe there's some things I want to change from last year and potentially you, you go in with fresh idea of like who you want to become and what you want to do and I think when we go into a year often it's the new year's resolutions you're like hey, this is what I'm going to do I'm, I'm terrible at that and often it's the what rather than the why and I think a question that's actually really important for us as we start a new year is rather than what am I going to do but who am I going to want to become who do I want to become yeah. uh, you know just an example of that I've done this so many times in my own life but okay, what am I going to do this year? Because, you know, it's going to be an amazing year. So we all want to have devotion with God. We want to get closer to him. So, you know, you make the what of, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. before the kids, before everything happens, and I'm going to do my quiet time then. And, you know, it all sounds really lovely and wonderful, but actually the reality of having your alarm go off at 5 a.m. and then trying to read and falling asleep and praying and your mind's blank and, and then being really irritable with your kids and actually not a nice person because you're getting up at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the reality of the plan actually isn't producing the fruit that you wanted it to. And so I think when we approach a year, sometimes just taking a step back and going, who do I want to become this year? What, what is it? I want to become more closer with Jesus and that ultimately is the goal, not the plan. And so the plan plans can change. It can look like, you know, just waking up and saying, Jesus, I need you today. And whether it's when the baby's having a nap, whether it's driving the car to wherever you're going, whether it's on the tube, you know, it doesn't really matter what the plan is because the goal is who I'm becoming. And I think that really helps us as we start a year to figure out, okay, what's important? What are my priorities? Rosalie, 
Presley. Um, you know, this last couple of years has been pretty crazy yeah. and there's been a lot of things shifting and things. I think there's been lots of time to reflect as well, lots of people doing that. But has your priorities changed or maybe refined during this season? Yeah, I think my priorities have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, one of the things that I think it's important to mention is for me, I had, I, I did an exercise with my husband mm -hmm. where we sat down and I wanted to be, you know, and it was kind of quite vulnerable for me as well because mm -hmm. I'm kind of in charge of my time <laughs> and in charge of what I do. Yeah. And then I, we looked at how I spend my time. Wow. Like really looking at how I like time, like my money, how I spend my time. And then it was a big realization for me to see how much time I'm spending on things that I think are productive, but they're really not, wow. or things that waste my time, yeah. or things that I'm exchanging for things that I'm, you know, like for example, uh, you know, having conversations over here versus spending quality time with my kids. Yeah a conversation that isn't meaningful, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah. it's, so that was, that for me was the starting point. Like, okay, where am I spending my time? Because before I can really prioritize, I need to know how much I have to spend, right? Yeah. And then, the, and then the next thing for me has been um, the pandemic. One thing that happened that was really good is that we did with the kids, um, the love languages test. Yeah. Um, because I was working from home and there was homeschooling and then they also needed time and yeah. space. And so that was really good because it enabled me to see how they felt loved yeah. <laughs> versus how I thought I yeah. was loving them, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so, um, so in terms of prioritizing time with my kids, which is one of my big things this year, you know, yeah. being really intentional about spending uh, quality times with them and with my husband, obviously, is allocating, being cautious about how I'm loving them in a way that is in line with how they feel loved, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then what I can say as well is in terms of uh, um, friendships, you know, and, and other people, my circle, I feel, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but mm. my circle ha of friendships has shrunk a lot mm -hmm. yeah. because of COVID. So yeah. a lot of friends have left, um, you know, we don't see each other anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it's the other thing has been to really be intentional about being um, authentic and meaningful yeah. in my relationships. Yeah. Um, and ex and having yeah meaningful exchanges with friends and being honest mm -hmm. about, yeah. you know, I'm not available for surface level, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like any anymore. Not that obviously that's necessary sometimes when you, you meet new people, mm -hmm. but the friends that really are close to me and matter to me, yeah. I want to make sure that we have heart to heart conversations mm -hmm. and that yeah. we allow each other to um, talk about the things that really matter. Yeah. You know? I love that. Mm. Yeah. I think, you know, it's exactly what you're saying. Time is actually so valuable and how we spend it, it, it shows, it does. It, it needs to align with our priorities because otherwise we find those things just get left to the wayside and yeah. our time just gets spent so easily and you're like, where, where is all my time? Yeah. I love that you did that exercise. That's pretty confronting. Like, where do I spend my time? And as women, well, everyone can be, but I think we have a lot of juggling going on. There's, and there's lots of priorities. There's like the kids and the husband and the family and the work and the business and God and church. And, you know, I mean, like keep all the plates and all the balls juggling in the air. But I want to ask you, <laughs> Is it possible to have all of these priorities? Because they are important. Like you can't, you don't just have one priority in life. You have many. But is it possible to, to balance all of these things? Do you know, I just honestly think there is no such thing as balance. And I know some people really strive for it. And if you found it, tell me where <laughs> to find it. Because I'd love to know. Yeah. But I've just tried. I've tried. I've strived yeah. and tried. And, you know, it's your marriage. It's your children. It's your job. It's studying. It's church. It's your relationship with God. I mean, it can go on. Yeah. 
and it just doesn't happen and I feel like when we do try and slice up our life like that and balance it mm -hmm. we kind of lessen areas of our life actually we don't enlarge mm -hmm. them yeah. so I feel like there are seasons where things are going to be bigger and mm -hmm. things are going to be smaller and I felt really called into study a few years back mm -hmm. and I know it's God because there is no other way <laughs> yeah. I'm going into study and a lot of people had opinions and a lot of people had really good um like ideas around how I should do it and I just mm. thought you know what if God's calling me into this then he's going to see me through this and there was a scripture it was Hebrews 12 1 to 2 and it was he's marked out the race for us that we mm. should run with perseverance yeah. and yeah. it was a real revelation that it was he's marked out my race my race yeah. you know my balance is going to look different in this season of study mm. than it would if I wasn't mm -hmm. and that's okay and we're going to have more takeaways because I haven't got time <laughs> yeah. to cook yeah. and you know the kids are going to have to help do some chores around the house because I'm going to have to do some essay writing and mm -hmm. it it's all okay that yeah. some things are bigger and some yeah. things are smaller in some seasons. So yeah. I truly think he enlarges our life and mm -hmm. he enlarges our capacity, yeah. like under his grace, mm -hmm. not this expectation of trying to balance everything, which doesn't enlarge, but it lessens. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? I love yeah. that. I think it's so true. It, I mean, there is this thing, you can't be doing everything yeah at once at all times you can't yeah. you can't put your 100 percent focus into everything but there are there's seasons where you're called to like there's i'm putting my attention here but then oh we need to put attention here and it's this constant dance between okay this needs to take my focus this needs and and it's amazing how god does it does it increases your capacity yeah. as you do that and what about you i know you would have some wisdom about that but what, setting priorities and our goals for the year and thinking what's important what's some wisdom you can give around that mm. You know, it's interesting, a lot of the things that you've just said really link to a lot of the research into the psychology of, of setting priorities and what's involved in that. Yeah. And, for example, uh, you just said now, Nicola, that we, it's impossible for us to focus on everything at the same time. And it is true. And actually, the first thing, there are three simple things when it comes to prioritising that I think is important for us to understand. The first one is actually about focus, mm -hmm. that ultimately prioritising is about what you focus on. Mm -hmm. And what we know about focused attention is that it's a very high cost um, thing that we do. You know, when, yeah. what I mean by high cost is, you know, the, the expression paying attention to something is really accurate because mm -hmm. when you pay attention to one thing, you actually lose your attentional capacity for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So it's a very, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, in cognitive yeah. terms, it's one of the most, uh, energy consuming activities that you can do with your brain wow. um, so focusing is very high cost but it, it, that means we need to be super intentional like you said you know mm. intentional about the the conversations that I'm going to focus on mm. the activities what what I choose to spend my time on mm -hmm. ultimately it's about focus um, but it's also very high reward mm -hmm. because what we know about the brain is that what you focus on grows literally wow. when you focus on something you see more of that and you know, there's a, a great verse in um, Jeremiah 29, 13 that says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Yeah. And that is true. When you set your focus in the things of God, you will automatically prioritize the things of God more yeah. wow. because it's almost like your biology is working with you. So I think understanding this is really important for us. So being very intentional about what we choose to focus on is really key. And the only other thing I would add to that is that Setting priorities is also ultimately about meaning. It's about purpose. Yeah. So when you, it links to what you were saying earlier, Nicola, about you know instead of just looking at the what, really thinking through who I want to be, mm -hmm. why why do I want to set this priority yeah. this year, and and ultimately, you know we we do live in a world that is overwhelmed with so much to do. I mean we all have so much stuff to do, <laughs> yeah. right? But. I, I read something the other day that said that the antidote to burnout, because we're seeing a lot of one of the yeah. consequences of too much, too much to do is actually people burning out. Yeah. But I read this thing that said that the antidote to burnout isn't less work, it's more meaning. Oh, so I actually like adding more meaning to the things that you choose to focus on yeah. will mm. energize you. It won't drain you. It will give you energy. That's why when we, when we do stuff that we know is linked to our purpose... It doesn't drain us. We feel like, you know, we I could do that every day twice on a Sunday. In fact, I do. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah. And I want to so keep good. going and going.
so good. And I just want to take notes when you talk. I'm yeah, like, where's yeah. my pen? I know, seriously. <laughs> she's incredible. I love that so much. Okay, so we talked about priorities. But now let's talk about plans. Does it, I, I don't know, I just love plans. Tim, my husband <laughs> hates plans. They constrict his life. He's just m way more of like, let's just, you know, just be cruisy and just come up with a plan later. But I'm just like, I love a good plan. Um, I love this quote that I, I heard Benjamin Franklin. He said, by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And so now we've talked about priorities, the things that are important for us, who we want to become. But now we need to talk about, okay, so we have those things. Now how are we going to plan to make sure that those priorities are the things that we focus on? Um, that, you know, that thing of if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every single time. You actually need to know, okay, this is where we're going and how am I going to get there? And I think one thing that I've found <laughs> maybe in the last few years that has been something when it comes to planning is that your calendar, your schedule can run you. Like this year, if you let it and you aren't intentional and you don't make a plan, you will just follow whatever, you know, all the engagement parties, the kids' parties, driving yeah. here, doing this, <laughs> school, yeah. oh, like everything can fill up your calendar. Everyone asking, can you do this? And can you come here? And, and, and if you're not in charge of your calendar and your, you know, all the events that you do, and you put in, okay, what is my priority? So family is my priority, so I'm gonna put in time for that. And yes, someone might ask me, can you do this? That's still a priority to me, and it's it's a non-negotiable. I'm gonna keep that time set aside. And I think, you know, making plans is so important when it comes to making sure our priorities are restored. What about you when you're thinking about the year? And how, how do you go about planning and why is that important to succeeding in yeah. your priorities? You know, you've just reminded me of a post-it note I've got in my very new office, by the way. I've got my own little space now, which is really <laughs> nice. nice. Um, and I think that's actually a big part of how I've set myself up for success this year is yeah. that I've really carved out my space so, where it's to yeah. be creative yeah. and organised. But um, my post-it note says take the Sabbath or the Sabbath will take you. Wow. And it's this, you know, wow. idea of take a rest, take a day, otherwise that day is going to take you. Like you mm -hmm. said, your calendar is just going to go crazy. And yeah. you need to set yourself up for success. Otherwise, the like default is going to be failure, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. the things are just going to overtake and your time's going to run and it's going to go nuts. And I think it's really important. Um, I loved what you said earlier about New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. You're so right. We do these big... <laughs> New Year's resolutions of like, it's too far in time frame and, you know, insert here activity and frequency that I'd like to do. And yeah. I feel like you need to set small goals. You need mm -hmm. to set real easy, quick wins that give you the momentum to go forward, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to do, you know, some time with God, like you've mm -hmm. said, it's, it's like, actually, well, I just, for the first week, like, let's just have two quiet times, tick, done, achieved. Yeah. You feel like a sense yeah. of achievement and it's really important. So... I also schedule in, um, I hope this doesn't sound weird, but I love it. Um, <laughs> I schedule in like a little one-on-one -on -one with myself. So it's more like one-one. Yes. I don't great. know how it goes. Yeah, okay. Like Thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I've got like a little set list of questions I ask myself. And um, it's like, yes. I sound really crazy by doing Do you answer back? I do. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Mari, so yeah, that's how I feel. I look like I'm having a conversation. Okay, anyway, I check in with myself. I check yeah. in with my goals. Yeah. Um, I basically keep myself accountable and I'm okay by reframing them. I feel so good, good at adjusting them. Yeah. I've long past gone, you know, feeling like a failure or mm. feeling like I haven't achieved because the truth is I have by sitting there, by taking the time to have that check in with myself, I have succeeded and I've been honest and it's good for your self-care, it's good for your self-management to go, mm -hmm. this goal needs to adjust, it doesn't yeah, need yeah. to go, it needs to adjust. Yep. And you're setting your future self up for success. So plans all day long, I love a plan. <laughs> My plans have plans, so yeah. So good. I think you would maybe be the same. Do you love plans? <laughs> I love a plan. <laughs> okay, so okay, we all need pens right now. Yeah, Let's take some notes. But what are some do's and don'ts in making plans? Like some things that can help us succeed and some maybe pitfalls when we make our plans. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the the I think the main do when it comes to making plans is actually to develop the practice of planning. 
but yeah. focusing on developing the habit of planning rather than necessarily the plan. You know yeah. that saying, you know, it's about having a plan, not necessarily about the plan. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important because we don't always do that. Mm -hmm. um, and this links to one of the main don'ts when it comes to planning, which is actually don't get stuck um, in, in tunnel vision with your mm -hmm. plans. You know, be flexible yeah. because things change and we don't always um, accept when things change, when the context changes, when the conditions or the environment um, require you to change your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy thing to change your mind. We haven't actually been wired to change our minds. There are yeah. lots of psychological mechanisms that block us from changing our minds easily. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I think there's, there's a psychological phenomenon called escalation of commitment to a losing course of action. It's a mouthful. <laughs> but, it sounds amazing. But this is what happens when, uh, when we get stuck in um, a plan that yeah. perhaps isn't working anymore, but we do live in a world that tells us, never give up, yeah. keep going. <laughs> and, you know, and actually never giving up doesn't mean stay stuck where you are yeah. just because you had the plan and the yeah. plan cannot change. Actually, you need to be open to um, circumstances changing or even to submit your plans to God and, and God that. comes in and he changes the plan. What happens then? I mean, there's yeah. this great story that I, I, um, I tell this story all the time, so maybe you've heard me tell this story <laughs> before about Adam, uh, Adam Grant, who's also a psychologist. He's a best-selling author. I'm sure you've read uh, his books. And he tells this story of the first time he went to climb a mountain. And it was a big deal for him. He dreamt about climbing that particular mountain in Panama, which was actually a volcano. And he wanted to climb the mountain and get to the top and look into the crater as you do <laughs> the volcano. Anyway, he, he, he set off on the journey and he had a plan. He had the map. He knew exactly how much time it took to get to the top of that particular mountain, which was four hours. So he convinced his friends and they all had the plan and they go. And four hours in, they're still not at the top, not even close. Five hours, six hours. Long story short, it took them eight hours to get to the top because they were actually at the wrong mountain. <gasps> yeah, one of the <laughs> highest mountains in Panama. Yeah. But they stuck to the plan instead of rethinking it when they saw that actually this is, something's not right here. Yeah. So they get to the top of this mountain. By the way, the sun is gone. They have no battery left on their phones. They're stranded at the top of a volcano in Panama. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a team of scientists there studying the volcano, so they did make it. Wow. <laughs> He's alive, selling books. But the, <laughs> the moral of that story is, yes, do develop the practice of having a plan, yeah. but don't get stuck in your plans, because I just finished with this verse that I love, um, which is in Proverbs uh, 16, verse 9, which says, In his heart, a man and a woman plans his course, yeah. but the Lord determines yes, his I steps. Yes, and, you know, that. God might just want to change the plan, and you <laughs> yeah. have to be open to yeah. that. It's okay yeah, to change your mind and to change your plans. Yeah. I love that. So good. I, I think both of you kind of touched on it, but the thing of... New Year's resolutions, making plans, you can fall off the wagon and be like, feel like a failure. But I think it's actually one of the greatest things to just recalibrate and go, okay, what is the actual priority here? What can I do? And not just go, okay, I'm going to put that aside and not try anymore. But it's actually, okay, we just change how we're going to do this, change how we approach this and just keep on going. Just keep on going one step forward. We've done priorities, done planning, but I love this one, dreams, because I think dreams are really important. And I, I stumbled across this quote that says, without leaps of imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. I love that. Without leaps of imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's that. Dreaming yeah. is, after all, a That's form beautiful. of yeah. planning. And I really do think, especially as God girls, Dreaming, having expectation, having faith is so important. And there are things that we can talk about. So talking about who we want to become. We want to be better friends. And so then we can put in a plan, actually a tangible plan. We're going to put in, you know, once a month meeting up with our girlfriends. We're going to be in 
um, make sure that we're intentional to text each other and have those conversations and you can put plans in place and you will see the fruit and benefits of those. But then there's things in life that you actually can't make plans to see these things come to fruition. They're dreams of your heart. Maybe, you know, even having a child when there's complications, finding that one, that spouse, you know, sometimes you can't really make a plan and see it's going to happen if I do X, Y, and Z. Sometimes, you know, things change and there's so many different things, but that, that sense of dreaming, that sense of, you know, God says, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask, think, or yeah. imagine. And mm. looking into the future and going, in a time where there has been a lot of disappointment, mm. there has been a lot of change and uncertainty, actually having the courage to dream, having yeah. the courage to have expectation. Yeah. And there can be that tension of, oh, I don't want to open my heart up to be vulnerable, to hope again and be disappointed. But then as girl girls to go, actually, no, my God has plans for me, that they are future and they are hope and he does do more than yeah, asking yeah. or imagine and this beautiful tension. Yeah. I know, Rosalie, um, you love this whole topic of oh. dreaming. When we we're talking yeah. about it, you're like, all about the dreaming. Yeah. Um, but why do you think it's so important to continue to dream and cultivate the dreams and desires of your heart? Yeah, um... I can talk about this for days. <laughs> you might need to stop me. Okay. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I, I, I believe that um, when, we, when we open ourselves up to dream, and, you know, before I say this, I, I do have, we have to recognise that this, these last two years have been very tricky for dreaming, right? Yeah. Because we have this kind of feeling that um, things you know, are not possible, you know. Yeah. And so um, what, what I love about, about dreaming is that it's an opportunity for us to um, apply faith. Yeah. Um, and, and dreaming requires a combination of faith and surrender. Yeah. Oh, um, so you know, faith yeah. to believe. Uh, and we know that, you know, God loves when we activate our faith. Yeah. There are so many, many scriptures in the Bible where even Jesus is marveled by, by a woman or a man's faith, yeah. right? Uh, the Bible says very clearly that it's impossible to please him mm. uh, without faith because mm. he would love us to really believe that he rewards us when we seek him. So faith is crucial when it comes to dreaming uh, because so many times we, we believe and we dream for things yeah. that we can't make happen for ourselves mm -hmm. and it's we are required to really stand in our belief that he's able to do for us way better and way more than what we could ever do for ourselves yeah. but then we also need to balance that with surrender mm -hmm. which is what you were talking about in yeah. with your long nice sentence about the escalation, <laughs> escalation. of commitment <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, which, which is about surrendering yeah, um, is. To, to, to him and, and having the courage, also, it requires courage as well, yeah. Yeah. you know, to um, have a dream and, and have that in our, in our heart, but also give it and submit it to God and let him uh, come to pass in a way that he that he would beautifully make happen, yeah. which is so much better that we could even uh, orchestrate ourselves. Yeah. Um, you know, I work with a lot of uh, women who, they build businesses and their dreams, it's all about making their family, you know, mm. providing for their families or creating something or making some amazing change in the world yeah. that um, they truly believe in but it's, it's not obvious, you know? And so um, dreaming is something that requires courage, like you mentioned yeah. before. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it also requires putting ourselves out there, yeah. uh, which can be very vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, when we dream about, about something that we believe in, where we, we can see it in our minds, sometimes the people around us don't really see it as well. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes the people around us have these ideas and conceptions about who we are yeah. that don't necessarily match who you're going to become as you work out your dream. So, I mean, I could go on. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, but, so uh, good. but the main thing is the understanding that dreams, dreaming requires faith. Yeah. And as and when our faith is activated, it's all about God. Yeah. And it also requires surrender requires surrender. Yeah, beautiful. And it's a yeah. dance between these two things. Yeah. Love that. Um, that will take us there.
So yeah. good. Yeah. I think, you know, dreaming when it comes to a Christian context and maybe a secular one is also different because you're saying it requires faith. Uh, I th- you know, when it comes to dreaming, there's also the dreams that maybe are from our humanity and our flesh, mm. but then there's the God dream yeah. and I, that you have to make the distinction between those things because, you know, when Jesus taught us to pray, he didn't, you know, he said, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think maybe sometimes there can be disappointments and there can be those things of like, oh, because maybe we're dreaming something that, you know, God has better or he has different. Exactly. And so actually getting to the point where it's, no, this is a God dream. And I know it's from that place of his will. I don't know how, I don't know when. It seems so crazy out there because what's impossible with man is possible with God. Yeah. But actually knowing that this is a God dream because that's the things that you can hold on to. Yes. Yeah. What about though the tension? I mean, there's so many examples in the Bible where a promise is given or a dream is there, yeah. but there's a waiting period. Maybe it seems like it's not coming to fruition. How do you not lose hope or get jaded in that season? Yeah, I mean, um, so one of the things that I think it's important is um, always, you know, going back to, and this is part of the surrender part as well, yeah. is, you know, going back to God um, and and make, letting him know Um, our intention or our heart towards what he wants for our lives, you know? And I think it becomes, um, that that is crucial. Um, Mm -hmm. The other thing, you know, as you you were saying, you know, testing the dream, like one of the things that we can maybe look at in terms of testing, is this of God or is it not of God, Mm -hmm. you know, is... Um, does it require God to be involved in, in, in it? That. You know, because yeah. if it requires us to, God to be involved in it, to bring it about, then it, you know, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a God thing. Uh, because if we don't mm-hmm. get the dream the way we wanted it, if he's involved, it will end up, you know, turning yeah. into something that he wants for our lives anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another, another thing is, does it benefit others? Is it going to help someone else grow? Is it, does it require for me to become a better, a bigger wow. person? Yeah. You know, these are questions. Um, but also, I think it's important that we um, look at our own gifts. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes we forget that God actually gives us gifts mm-hmm. uh, through our personalities and our yeah. strengths and our abilities um, that, uh, it, you know, when we have that in mind, uh, our response is to glorify him with the gifts that he has already given us. Um, And then, yeah, taking responsibility for developing, uh, you know, those gifts that he gives us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Because, you know, he, he, it's like the the, the story of the talents, you know, Jesus tells us the story. God gives, um, this uh, owner gives talents to different people and they had to cultivate those yeah. gifts. And, so and we use this analogy often about money, but actually yeah. it also has to do with the gifts and the talents that God yeah. gives us um, for our lives. So, that. Yeah, like yeah, in the so waiting, much- not just sitting on, on what God's given you and, and given you to steward in your life, but developing, letting the waiting season, letting the testing season um, grow things in you and produce faith in you and perseverance in you and all of those things. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so good. Yeah. Another thing that I was going to mention, which is a little bit random, <laughs> but, <laughs> love that. Um, I, you know, I, I, I really believe that um, when we go to God, uh, you know, we're dreaming about something and we go to God and we ask him to fulfill a dream or a desire that we have in our hearts. One of the key things that I think sometimes we can forget about is the forgiveness element Mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah. You know, the Bible says very clearly that when we go to God and we ask, we want to ask him for something, he he says, um, put your offering there, go and see if you have a problem with a with a, a brother. If you do, go and make up with him yeah. and then come back to me and, and I'll fulfill your request. And so um, I just wanted to put that out there. I know it's a bit random, but mm-hmm. I think that sometimes um, in order for us to get clarity from God in terms of what he wants us to do and the next steps that he might want for us in our lives, I think it's important that we also 
clear ourselves and free yes. ourselves from the things that are in our hearts that are little um, or big, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, things that might be um, holding us back. Holding yeah. us back, yeah. yeah, and keeping us from having a real authentic and pure uh, relationship yeah. with, with him. So beautiful. Um, so much wisdom. So nice. This has been so incredible. <laughs> We're yeah. almost done, but Anna. Yes. Um, why don't you just put a lovely little neat bow on everything? We've been yeah. talking about priorities right. and plans and dreaming. What's three things, three quick takeaways for the girls today? Okay, three quick takeaways, I think. Number one, stay focused on purpose mm -hmm. and let the purpose drive your priorities, your plans and your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, number two, I would say stay flexible. Yeah. Because that will help you um, find the joy. Love in the that. journey as well. Yeah. And number three, share your dreams with someone, someone yeah. that is close to you that will help you um, stay more connected. Mm -hmm. And it also brings accountability and it will ultimately help you fight yeah. for and achieve those dreams. So Amazing. good. Oh my gosh. Love it. I'm going to take so many notes. I know. I'm going to watch this. <laughs> over. this. <laughs> so good. Well, Thank you so much for joining us. I, I love Habakkuk 2 too. It talks about write down the vision, make it plain on tablets. It might not be tablets of rock, it might be tablets of iPads, but um, because those who read it can run with it. And I think an amazing exercise for all of us to do would be take out a journal. There's a blank page, there's a new year ahead of us. What are our priorities? What is God, actually what's the lane that God has for us? Not just what we think, but what's God calling us to this year? the race he's got ahead of us because he actually graces us what he what he calls us to do um, and then we can make some plans be flexible with your plans but just dream start dreaming have an expectation because God is good and he does he said he's going to do more than we can ask think or imagine and even though there might be valley seasons even though there might be challenges we know that he's for us and with us and so I actually was praying for our sisterhood this year and I wanted to instead of just praying I wanted to kind of do a benediction because it's what Paul prayed in Ephesians and I love it in this version. It's actually one of my favorite um, scriptures, but I read it afresh in the message and it says this, and I'm gonna believe and pray this over you girls. It says, I ask, I ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. I love that, that we would know him more personally, that we'd understand the extravagance of his work in and through us. Endless energy, boundless strength. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 2022. Amen. We love you girls. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> firstly, thank you so much. Oh, All the you. wisdom. It's been so much fun. I've loved every single moment. Colour is coming. Please make sure that you are registered, doing it with your girlfriends. Yes. It's going to be so incredible. We love you and we will see you next time. Bye. See you.